welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the beta oxidation of a monounsaturated fatty acid. And the monounsaturated fatty acid we're going to look at is oleoil CoA. And that has 18 carbons and it has a double bond at position 9. So if we draw that, it's going to look like this. All right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And, and really, I, I'll mention this many times. Most of the time when you're drawing fatty acids, especially ones with double bonds, it's really exercises in really making sure that, you know, you actually draw it correctly. So let me make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is carbon 9, carbon 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so we've got that correct. Okay, so now what we want to do is we just want to beta oxidize it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through beta oxidation, right? I'm going to run it through beta oxidation and shorten it by two carbons. So now the double bond is going to be at carbon 7, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this is carbon 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right? Just shorten it by two carbons. So now this is carbon 8 and this is carbon 16. Right. Okay. So now I'm going to do another round of beta oxidation and shorten it again by two carbons, right? Because acetyl CoA is coming off, right? So now that's going to be carbon five where the double bond is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, right? So now this is carbon five, this is carbon six, and this is carbon fourteen. All right. Why well, don't do another round of beta oxidation? So now it's going to be CoA, and now it's going to be carbon 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? So this is carbon 3, this is carbon 4, and this is carbon 12. Okay, this is the point in the oxidation in which it becomes um, a little different than saturated fats. And quite frankly, this pathway is nowhere near as complex as for polyunsaturated fats. This is, this is actually easy compared to polyunsaturated. Polyunsaturated gets really complicated. In this, we're really only going to have one different enzyme. And that enzyme's name is delta-3, delta-2, enoyl-CoA isomerase. And essentially what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to take this double bond that cis in between 3 and 4 and turn it into a trans bond between 2 and 3. So you're going to end up with something like this. So here's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so this is carbon 2, this is carbon 3, and this is carbon 12. And now, now you just run it through another beta oxidation, right? The only difference now is that you didn't have to use fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase. So as a result of that, you don't you, you miss out on generating one FADH2. So instead, you're going to start with enoyl CoA hydratase. And if we run through beta oxidation right here, we're going to shorten by two carbons and we're going to end up with this, a, a 10 carbon fatty acid. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A 10 carbon fatty acids. This is carbon 10. And actually, if we go on to do this, right, I can cleave this right here, right there, right there, and right there. So I'm going to go through four rounds of beta oxidation, and that's going to give me five acetyl CoAs. It's going to be four NADHs and four FADH2s. So let's total what we have so far. Well, in these first three reactions, right? Right here, I generated an FADH2 and an NADH and an acetyl-CoA. Here, I generated the same thing, and here, I generated the same thing again. So all I would need to do is add three of each thing to my totals, right? So if we make a table, here's going to be acetyl-CoA, here's FADH2, and here's NADH, right? Acetyl-CoA is all I need to do, is, assuming it's an even-numbered fatty acid, just take the total carbons and divide by two. So this is going to be nine acetyl CoAs. For FADH2s, I generated three here, so three there. 
but I had to bypass one here. So I'll put a star where I bypassed it, and I essentially bypassed it at this step. So I lost out on generating an FADH2. But then I generated, I ultimately generated uh, four more. So that's what? It's three plus, hold on a second, it's, uh, let me think about this, three plus four, yeah, it's seven. So seven. And then for NADH, I got one, two, three here. And there was one produced here, right? There was an NADH produced here. So that's four plus four more is eight. Plus four more is eight. And so this is my total for the unsaturated fat. And for, for the unsaturated fats, you end up losing an FADH2. So it doesn't really matter where the double bond is here. As long as there is an unsaturation, I end up losing an FADH2. Although the NADH stays the same. But as we'll find when we do polyunsaturated fats, you end up having to burn an NADPH. And that's different than NADH. So you end up burning an NADPH and you, that, that ends up being sort of a waste. So it turns out that really when you're oxidizing fatty acids, you really want to be oxidizing what? You want to be oxidizing saturated fat. Number one, because it's more efficient. It's a shorter pathway, but also you don't waste any NADPH. We didn't hear, but we end up, we end up losing an FADH2. And you, you want to maximize your energy. And of course, these two things right here, FADH2 and NADH, ultimately go into the electron transport chain and fuel the synthesis of ATP. So in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at this, the catabolism of linoleic acid. And linoleic acid has two double bonds. And so I hope this video helped and see you in the next video.